In this video, we'll talk about the proof of the ratio test and give you an idea of why it works to show that series converge or diverge. Like mentioned previously, the idea of this proof is that we're doing direct comparison to a geometric series. And why should we think to do this? Well, if we look at the limit we're trying to compute for the ratio test, if this quotient inside the limit was always rho, like it's always the same number rho, then I basically have a geometric series. I'm saying that the ratio of two consecutive terms is always the same number rho, which is what it means to have a geometric series. It means that consecutive terms have the same ratio. Now I don't have that it's always constant here, but I have that it's this number in the limit. And the point basically is, if in the limit this goes to rho, that means that sort of in some context, my series almost looks geometric if I go far enough out in the series. So if I look at the end where the limit sort of comes into play, my series looks almost geometric because this limit converges to rho. There's many ways for this limit not to exist, in that case the ratio doesn't apply. But if this limit exists and it equals some rho, it means my series is almost geometric at the end. We'll make this precise here when we actually talk about how you prove this sort of a statement. Let's try to prove that if rho is less than one, the series converges. So we'll assume that rho is less than one. With rho less than one, we'll pick a value r, which that's gonna be rho plus one over two. And since rho is less than one, this r is between rho and one. Now, because my ratios limit to rho, eventually, far enough out in the series, the ratio is less than r. So because r is bigger than rho, we have that there is an n, capital N, so that if little n is bigger than n, we have that this ratio is less than r. It has to converge to rho, so it has to be below r if we're out in the sequence because it is a limit. What does this mean? This means that a n plus one in absolute value is less than r times a n because that ratio is less than r. This also holds for every n bigger than this point, so we also then know that a n plus two is less than r times a n plus one, but by our above statement, that's less than r squared times a n. You can keep applying this over and over and over again to get that for any k, a n plus k is less than r to the k times a n, which means I can bound the a n plus stuff by this geometric series. Right, this here is my series. This here is a geometric series. And because r is less than one, this converges. What this tells me, if I were to take the sum of all of the terms bigger than capital N, this will converge by direct comparison with the geometric series above. And that I mean the series in absolute values because I'm looking at positive terms here. But if the end of the series converges, the first n terms are all just numbers. I can add those up and that's also finite, which then tells me the whole series converges. So this comparison gives me that my series converges because this geometric series also converges. How would you do this the other way? Well, in the other case, if rho is bigger than one, I'm not gonna go through the whole details here, but if rho is bigger than one, I pick this same r, and now r is bigger than one and less than rho. And so the same thing holds, except all my inequalities now go backwards. I know that my series is now bigger than this geometric series for r because I limit to rho, which is bigger than r. Therefore, I get a bigger here. I get a bigger equal here, bigger here, bigger here. I know that now that I'm bounded from below by this geometric series. And since r is bigger than one, that geometric series diverges. So I know that I'm bigger than a series that diverges, therefore I also diverge. And that's why the greater than one case works as well. You can also kind of see why the equals one case doesn't work here, because I don't know if I'm bigger or smaller or what happens if I'm equal to one, I have nothing I can do with this. So that's why you get a convergence for less than one, a divergence for bigger than one, and an inclusive test for one, because you can't really say much more if your limit here is one. Now just for another example of a series we can test with the ratio test, does sum to an infinity of five to the n over n factorial converge or diverge? Key point to look at here is this factorial. That's a big sign that you should be using the ratio test to solve these problems. Let's go ahead and write this out. For the ratio test, I wanna find rho, which is the limit as n goes to infinity, absolute value of a n plus one over a n, 
I can plug in these terms. 5 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial divided by 5 to the n over n factorial. I can then flip my fractions around, simplify the expressions to give me limit as n goes to infinity of 5 to the n plus 1 over 5 to the n times an n factorial over an n plus 1 factorial. And now we see why the ratio is so nice here because this here just becomes a 1 over n plus 1 because the factorial on the top cancels everything else on the bottom except for the n plus 1 term. And this becomes a 5 like before. So this becomes the limit as n goes to infinity of 5 over n plus 1, which is 0. 0 is fine. The point here is it's less than 1. So since rho is less than 1, I know this series converges by the ratio test. So that's the idea of how you prove the ratio test, at least an idea of how this proof might be structured, as well as another example of using the ratio test to show that series converge or diverge.